drink for breakfast. Economics. So easy a child could do it. Well, a child has time for that kind of stuff, not me. Now, let's see what's on the tube. Hi, Billy Mays here, and I have a great new exciting product for you. Economics. Economics is deeply rooted in human behavior. If you're hungry, you buy more food. If you're cold, you buy a coat. It's that simple. You use economics every day when you choose to buy or not to buy something. Or, if you're an entrepreneur running a business, you choose what to sell at what price. You also decide what to do with limited resources available to you. These decisions are all interlinked and affect the world around you. When you decide that a product is too expensive, you don't buy it until the company lowers the price. The company lowers the price by cutting down the cost of manufacturing the product, usually by making the manufacturing process more efficient. They also might choose to use discount materials or hire more workers in the factory. Economics is all around you and that you participate in it every day. Each time you make a decision about what to buy or not to buy, you are making an economic decision. Even though we here in America use a free market or capitalist economic system, it's always good to be informed. So call the number on the bottom of your screen and talk to one of our friendly operators to see if a JA Economics textbook is what you need to make an informed economic decision. Call now and you can get a second JA Economics textbook free. That's an incentive. With reduced shipping costs, Call the number on your screen, and remember, if I'm selling it, it's got to be good. I know you got some wants tonight. And distribute goods all right. Uh oh. The want satisfaction change begins with the human wants. Land labor capital is next. Uh oh, uh oh, uh. Next, we get into production, resulting in good services for you. Oh yeah, which go through distribution, then made available for consumption. The want. Satisfaction change, the story is not complete. The process begins again and again. This is the one satisfaction chain, 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 just, just, just one. And welcome back to our feature presentation, The Life of the Caveman. Even in our most primitive state, humans used many of the same resources we use today. Cavemen had to find natural resources, like wood, to build homes and keep warm. <coughs> Labor, or human resources, were used as well. Last but not least, cavemen were accustomed to using capital resources to get what they needed. Good evening, I'm Wyatt Kojak. And I'm Penelope Jackson with the 10 o'clock news. Our first story tonight is the ongoing battle between the smelt 
and the crops. This is the explanation of the scarcity of water. Let's go to Linda Jewelhart for more information. California's Central Valley is considered by many to be the richest and most productive farmland in the nation. But this land is being threatened by the small, harmless looking minnow called the Delta Smelt. Recently, it has landed on the endangered species list, prompting a federal court to shut down vital pumps to farmers to help preserve it. Two years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do this. This was a canal full of gushing water irrigating the farmland here in the San Joaquin Valley. But as you can see, it is all dried up. The pumps were turned off after environmentalists won a federal court case, but at least one lawmaker in Washington is fighting back. You're spending one trillion dollars and you won't put in what provision that would create safe 60,000 jobs. This is an insult to my constituents. This is a great example of Congress making an opportunity cost. On one hand, they have the fish and on the other hand, there are many jobs at risk. This is also a great example of micro and macroeconomics. Cole Upton is a third generation almond farmer here, and he argues that the American consumer should get ready for produce prices to soar and food scares to become a common occurrence. Very simply, I would say, do you want to depend for your food supply on a foreign country? If you think you have problems now with salmonella and trying to find out what part of the United States it came from, think of the problem if you have a food scare and your food is being imported from South America or China or somewhere. Representative Nunes estimates that 37,000 jobs have been lost due to the smelt issue, and that number is rising higher by the day. And in one town, Mendota, California, unemployment is up to an astonishing 40 percent. In other news, new laws are being passed that make it illegal to be tall, bald, and ugly. You call yourselves entrepreneurs. Well, I call you entrepreneur. <clears throat> an entrepreneur is imaginative, has innovative thinking, management skills, and is capable of starting and running a business. How stupid can you be? People need an incentive to buy a product, like lowering the prices. That's an incentive. You need to think about the benefits and the costs when making choices. People made a choice not to buy your product, which was probably an economically smart thing to do. You paid no attention to your marginal costs. The additional costs it took to make your product cost more than you would make, giving you no benefits from your, de your decision. Most importantly, you didn't make a profit. A profit? Do you even know what a profit is? A profit is a positive difference between total sales and total costs. That's it. I'm sick of you. You're fired!